Hi, fourth grade, it's Mrs. Feathers. We're going to go over your grammar practice pages for the week. This week you are assigned pages 51 to 54. On Tuesday, you will have page 51 assigned and due. On Wednesday, pages 52 to 53. And on Thursday, page 54. Your grammar test will be on Friday this week since we do not have school on Monday. Your first page <clears throat> is on verbs. A verb tells what the subject does or is. A verb can include more than one word. There may be a main verb and a helping verb. Let's take a look at some of these sentences together. Read each sentence and find the verb. Write it on the line provided. Let's take a look at number one. Number one says the white cat sleeps on the sofa. Number one, there is only a main verb. The subject of the sentence is the white cat and the verb is sleeps. So on the line, I'm going to type sleeps. Number two says, she was counting the fluffy clouds. The subject is she, and the verb is counting, but I also need to include the helping verb was. So I'm going to type was counting. You will finish this page with the same directions for three through 10. On Wednesday, you will have pages 52 to 53. On page 52, the box states, a verb tells what the subject does or is. An action verb tells what the subject does, did, or will do. And action verbs can have different tenses. They can show an action in the past, present, or future. A lot of times with verbs, if it happens in the past or already happened, the verb will end in ed. If it's going to happen in the future, you'll see the helping verb will in front of the verb. Number one says the angry baby cries loudly for her bottle. We need to identify if the verb is past, present, or future. On the line for number one, the verb is cries. Cries is happening in the present, so I need to type out present. Number two says the weatherman will predict the weather after this commercial break. I see the verb predict and I see the helping verb will in front of it. Because I have the helping verb will, this verb is in future tense. You will follow these same directions to complete this page. And page 53 is looking at titles. So we underline or italicize titles of television shows, movies, books, and CDs, and names of newspapers and magazines. So we underline or italicize the names of bigger pieces of work. We use quotation marks around titles of stories, articles, essays, songs, and poems. So we use quotation marks for the smaller pieces of those big works. So in a show, I would underline the title of a show. So maybe I'm going to underline The Big Bang Theory. If I'm talking about a specific episode, I use quotation marks. Movies, I underline a whole movie title. Books. I underline the title of the book. So if I'm reading The Hunger Games, I underline that title. 
if I'm talking about a chapter within that book, I'm going to put the chapter name in quotation marks. CDs, the title of a CD, you would underline. Every song within the CD, you would put quotation marks around. A newspaper, the Tribune Review, I would underline the title of that newspaper, but any article within it, I would put quotation marks around. We capitalize every word in a title except articles, conjunctions, and prepositions that are not at the beginning or end of the title. On this page, you have six sentences and you're going to type them correctly. Up at the top of your um, Google Slides, you should see a toolbar. And in your toolbar, you should have the format where you can underline or italicize, or it should come up here, I for italics, U for underline. Number one says, have you ever read the book Peter Pan by J.M. Barry? I need to correct the title in this sentence. Peter Pan is the title of a book, which means it needs underlined or italicized. I'm going to click the U for underline. Click it again to get rid of it. The reason you can pick between underlining or italicizing is if you're actually writing this out, you would underline because it's very hard to write in italics. But if you're typing, you can choose to use italics. Let's take a look at number two as well. Number two says, I like the article Real School Kids in the magazine School Times. There's a few mistakes in this sentence. First, there's a title of an article, and articles are smaller pieces of work, so it should be in um, quotation marks. Also, the word school needs to be capitalized in that article title. And then also, there's a magazine title, which is a bigger piece of work, School Times. So that needs to be underlined or italicized. So again, I'm going to put the title of the article in quotation marks and make sure I capitalize that S in school. And the title of the magazine, School Times, needs to either be in italics or underlined. You will finish up this page with questions three through six. Again, this page will be assigned and due on Wednesday. On Thursday, you'll have your proofreading page. The box reminds you at the top of all of the rules from the previous pages. The directions state to rewrite the paragraphs below, correcting mistakes in verb tenses and titles. Number one says, Devin likes the action movie, The Cowboy. A movie is a bigger piece of work, so it actually needs to be underlined or italicized, and it should also have a capital T in the and C in cowboy. You will finish going through these little paragraphs, again, correcting mistakes in verb tenses and titles. Make sure you're going back each day and checking any comments the teachers are leaving you on your grammar pages so that you know where you made mistakes or might need to fix things before your grammar quiz on third or Friday. Sorry, Friday this week. Have a great day, fourth grade, and I will hopefully see you soon. Bye.